My name is Joshua. Welcome back to my channel. Today, um, we are going to be heading out over to another YouTuber's place, and we're going to be bow fishing. Now, this YouTuber is um, Papa Pepper. Um, you can go check out his channel. It's called Papa Pepper, and um, he's also on Steam It and Hive. I'm also on both of them, both of those uh, social media web sites. So yeah, we're going bow fishing. We're going to try to get as much, as many fish as we can. And, you know what, I actually, oh my gosh, I completely forget what kind of fish we're going to be, um, bow fishing for. Um, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, if you also may notice that the video, especially maybe right now, I am tired because we just got back from, um, a trip with some friends and stuff. And I'm exhausted, but we've been waiting to do this bow fishing for a while, but the weather's never been right, and maybe the fish have been biting at the wrong times for us. And this is just, you know, the last chance we have to go bow fishing. And we're figuring, we're like, alright, well, might as well jump to the chance, otherwise we're not going to have another chance. So, even though we're all tired and exhausted, sort of, and actually, I have a little bit of poison ivy. You can't really see it, because it's all on my stomach and back, and shoulders and some of my feet some of my legs yeah i do have a little bit of poison ivy but hey i mean we're gonna go bow fishing we also may be staying there a while at wherever we're bow fishing at I'd be, i'm I, I don't know what we're doing really i know we're going bow fishing but i don't know how long we're gonna stay um i don't know where we're going except that we're going with papa pepper and yeah so let's hop in the car and Let's get on with this adventure. Also, some extra things we um, also gotta say. One thing, there may be water moccasins in this um, place we're going to fish, to do bow fishing. So, maybe water moccasins, that's why I'm getting these boots and these pants. Yeah. Also, there is another one thing, because I'm going to be charging through water. Well, hmm, this hole in my boot might pose a problem. Just saying. Yeah. Caleb has a hole in his boot, too. Yeah. Those may pose problems. I mean, I don't know. Just roughing it, I guess. The ones we're probably going to hit are about 5 to 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. This is the setup for you guys, and you guys will take turns. Pinky will be there to help you. Um, the slide always goes to the front. See that? Oh, wow. This goes through here, and when you clip it on, you keep this end up. Okay? When you pull it back, you know, is when you aim. And if the fish are right at the surface and they're right there and you're looking at them, just aim for them. If they're sideways and they're deep in the water, you have to aim underneath them. Like if I was going to try to shoot his foot, I would aim about here. Alright, so if we're heading off, I guess, to who knows where, who knows what we'll find. We might find an alligator. First, we're car hunting, not alligator hunting. Also looks like, yeah, my, this boot right here, with the one with the hole, it's completely waterlogged. It's full with water. This boot's dry though. I'm, not, I'm dry in this sock, but that, mm -mm. nope. We're just trudging through here. I gotta straight, straighten out my string. Hold on. Snapper. Yeah. No. I'm pretty sure. No, it's a. No. No, it's not. Oh hi. It looks like a redder slide. Get it. Yeah, I got it. No. I think it's a cooter. Okay. I'm not smart. It's a male. <laughs> Mind about that. Touched him. Not a, not, not a snapper. Never oh, mind. No. False alarm. Oh, Did you catch him? <laughs> non turtle specialist. Don't trust me when it comes to freshwater marine life. Just don't. It's not a, it's not a wise idea. Look at those claws. That's crazy. That's some claws, man. Woo. Good grief. Good job, Caleb. 
This is what you call a honey locust tree. And there's not a whole lot that's sweet about it. It's just a whole lot of pain. Okay, so here's the deal, folks. Um, we went to about, what, four or five spots so far and didn't see anything. Uh, we, Caleb caught a turtle. <laughs> that was about it. And um, we were coming to a spot where last night they said they caught about 40 fish with the bows. So it's back in these woods here where there's some shallow waters. So we're going to go back through there and see what, what happens now. He's saying be very careful because, right, if you scare the first one, what happens? Right, the rest of them will take off. Um, sometimes you can shoot one and hold it still and kind of get out and shoot one right next to it. You know, take a step and you got another fish. We were doing this last night. But if you spook them by being loud through there, the first one will take off. It'll spook everyone else and they'll just take off. From here, you can't even tell there's water there. But some of it's at least up to my chest. Um, and they pull up in the real shallow stuff. You'll be walking through pretty much a flooded field. You got about a foot to six inches of, you know, water. And it's all just weeds. And you just got to learn to pick out the shape, find them, and stick them. And the cool thing then is you're not shooting through a lot of depth. So you don't have to mess with the refraction much. Even though we pulled almost 50 fish out of here last night, I'm still thinking this is the best spot for us to go tonight because of just the dynamics and a couple things going on where I think this is where we're going to find them. How is your name? But boys, that's exactly what we're going for. First thing I do, I get a thumb in its mouth and try to hook in its gill. I'll rip out the gills on one side. And then I'll rip out the gills on the other side. I will reach up. Put them, put them on yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is a good one. This is probably about a 10 pounder. I'll take this out. This goes up its gill. And then it comes out its mouth. When I do that, I slide it down as far as I want it. Tie it in a knot. That's <clears throat> that's the first one and now it'll start bleeding out and this is probably a big female okay mm -hmm. but did you see how like mm -hmm. you missed you know what i mean yeah but you were on it you were right there and you could probably lean in a little more yeah, now here a better chance if i was actually on the side of it like you were it seems like it was i got stuck in so this arrow i might just be able to pull out otherwise if i was deeper i would shove it through yeah. but i'm in the spine which is right between the fillets I'm not quite as concerned. So now I make sure, hook this up, it's going through one of these and then onto one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you on okay, film. Fine. I'm gonna get you on film. Oh, I missed it. All right, so what, that's number five right now? Number five. I think number five. Listen, I can barely see these things. He's shooting most of them because he's got an eye for um, what we're hunting for look at the size difference on that too. yeah so that's, that's a, like three, a 12 just, pounder three pounder probably yeah definite size difference between these things ouch and uh he is just he he's on him he sees them way before i do and i've taken three shots and everything everything every time i've taken a shot i'm shooting left Ready? all right so what do we catch here papa common snapping turtle Jalandra serpentina oh You've already got a band-aid on that finger. You don't want another one, do you? <laughs> so it's, you're saying this is called a mirror carp? I think they're called mirror carps. It's a genetic mutation with the scales where they start getting kind of weird. Some parts are scaleless. The scales that there are are very interesting. Um, there's a variety that has like no scales that only has some up by the dorsal now, fin. Turn it over. It was like more, the other side was yeah. Even, yeah, look, look at that. But it, I saw it for a second. It turned away from me in the arrow, actually. Here's the tip of my arrow. Right. Mm -hmm. Coming right in the skull. But just... Wow. So what causes the mutation, you think? I'm not sure. But some people, they really like them. And I think they... Some of them are raised, you know, commercially. So they'll breed for them. But there's a lot of pictures if you look at people fishing for these over in Europe. So here you can see a normal carp with its scales. And then this guy with his scales. Complete and totally different. All right. They're both common carp. This one just has a, a defect. Okay, so we didn't have exactly the night that he had last night. He had like what he said, forty fish in one night, over yeah. forty fish, and like tonight we have eight, eight fish, and the biggest one, eleven and a half pounds. You said? Yeah, eleven and a half pounds on the big one. 
Right. I figured it was about 12. And so uh, the other, you said you caught the biggest fish you've ever, or the biggest carp you've ever caught this year. What was that weight? Uh, that? I'm guessing it was only about 15 pounds. It was just a little bit bigger than this. So somewhere probably between 12 and 15. So the way I do these, just a regular fillet, take a cut through there. Some you'll cut through, some of the scales will pop off. And then I go in right along the backbone and I'm pretty much going down until I feel the rib cage. Just stay on this side of the dorsal fin, coming down, and once I reach the vent where they breed and poop and pee from, I shove the knife all the way through, and then I follow that backbone right up the middle. So when I come out the end, I can hear I was hitting the right. bone there. Right. And to keep it even, I go to the other side so the fish isn't all lopsided because it's missing the side. I do this cut right away, and oh, there we go. That's hard scales to get through, huh? They are. They're not as bad as gar, but they are tough, and they are big and thick. So again, following the spine all the way down, make it past the vent, come on out. Then at this point, I just kind of slowly peel back, feeling for those uh, the ribs. Just make it past that part, bring it up. And they got one weird bone that sticks off the back of their head, um, which you got to watch out for. This one I must have cut through. But just follow those ribs all the way to the bottom. That part disconnect it. I'll take the other one off in a minute, but to show you, then I should have left my left thumbnail long in spring because you can pin that down and you just, oops, there's a scale there. Slide it right next to that skin. And if you're doing it carefully, you don't leave any meat on the inside of there. It's a little difficult because it's such a big yeah. fillet. Mm -hmm. Takes practice. Yeah, and I got one finger I cut open last night with a fly knife, and then oh man, a short thumbnail. So this is not the best grip. But here you can see some room for improvement. But some of these, when we take them off, they're almost a two-pound fillet. Yeah, wow. And there mm -hmm. is a little line of Y bones down them, which is why people think they're too much work. But candy number pickling them takes that right out of there. Yeah, awesome. Great. Very good. And so the remainder of, now guys, this is the important part. The remainder of the fish that you're going to throw away, you take, you don't throw it away. You actually feed it to your chickens. It becomes chicken food, which is valuable. It's heavy in protein, which is great for egg production. And, or another great option, my neighbors used to do this when I was growing up, would take this and then put it in your garden for next year. Um, and, or you, like, if you have tomato plants already going in your garden, or if you have plants already going in your garden, you dig a hole next to your plants and drop that stuff into the hole. And, and man, you talk about supercharge. This one here. Right, that's all his, uh, innards. Yeah, all those guts. The chickens love to peck that apart. This one's a male. Okay. So this white stuff here is what they call the milk. It's a male. In right. the females, you'd have a bunch of eggs. You can eat the eggs in gar. They're poisonous. These are edible, but the chickens really love them. So I let them peck this carcass clean. Um, and then I bury this under a fruit tree or something like that when I'm planting it. Otherwise, you can also just put this in a five-gallon bucket of water, keep it covered, and make your own fish emulsion, which the garden really loves too. Oh, absolutely. I put that on my garden every year. So um, uh, the gar's poisonous. The, 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 the caviar for the gar or the eggs of the gar. Why? How's that? Uh, just a self-defense mechanism, I guess. That's crazy. Oh, interesting. But for it's fine with uh, have you, so you've eaten the the, the, the eggs for these? Uh, yeah, carp and bluegill and sunfish and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean I've had salmon, yeah, you know fish eggs, but I've never had um, and uh, sturgeon, which most caviar is made from, is unclean. Yeah, but um, they they make a really good bowfin caviar. Have you ever heard of that? That, that? no, uh, I love bowfin. They're a cool fish, one of my favorites. But I never. Yeah, the, the caviar we've ordered it from, before from MarkeysOnline.com. It's actually pretty affordable because uh, most people don't buy it. It's not a very high in demand ca caviar, but sure. it's it's we thought I loved it. I thought it tastes great. One uh one thing I like about bowfin too, when you have the babies in the water. Uh, bullheads will be this black mass mm -hmm. and it'll just be a whole bunch of babies but when the bowfin do that the male is actually in the middle wow. so they'll have all these tiny little ones swimming around and this giant fish in the middle protecting them which is pretty cool yeah neat Ugh. 